As educators work to get back to school, what should parents really consider to make the best choices for their kids this fall? To help answer that, I am joined by Dr. Jennifer Nuzzo with the Johns Hopkins Bloomberg School of Public Health, who has been working on this. Thank you for being with us. Thanks for having me. So we also know there's a cost to keeping kids home. What do you think is needed to open schools responsibly? Well, it'll be easiest to open schools if we have low levels of disease in the surrounding community. So if there is time between now and when school starts, it is really, I think, in the community's best interest to try to figure out how to do that. Um, parents who want to send their kids at school, will, you know, have to make decisions about how to limit their exposures um, outside of school settings so that they can make sure they um, are less likely to become infected and not bring the virus to school. Yeah. And I, I know here in Connecticut, they're proud that we have about a 1%, even less than 1% infection rate. So our kids are supposed to be heading back to physical school if the parents choose. But schools are different than businesses, you say. What do they need to do differently? Well, first of all, schools are different than businesses. And I think one of the key differences is that they play an enormously important role in our communities. Not to say that businesses don't, but schools are essential for our economy. They're essential for our kids' health and development. They're essential for working families. So uh, I think they should receive top priority if we're going to think about what to keep open. And if um, there are, uh, you know, businesses in the community that we think are um, going to contribute to transmission, then I think we should prioritize um, schools over that. Also, I think when we talk about schools, it's um, we're starting from a place of, of lower risk in the sense that children are um, fortunately uh, less severely impacted by this virus. So really the question becomes, how do we protect um, the teachers in the school systems and the staff and also prevent um, protect the, the families at home that the children are, are returning to. And I think that there are some important you know, safety protocols that we can put in place, the same sort of things we do, physical distancing, masks, hygiene, just keep our, our space. And um, you know, I, I think that those uh, approaches have really shown to be beneficial. Yeah, we're almost out of time, but it, it, sometimes there's going to be a COVID case. Does that mean every time they have a positive case, the school will have to shut down? Well, one of the safety protocols that we hope is get put into place is to limit the number of students and staff that interact with each other through the course of the day. That will hopefully limit the possibility of becoming infected. But also, if there's a case, it will limit the number of people who have been exposed. So hopefully um, that we may have to only you know, close the classroom as opposed to close the whole school. Okay. Schools may close for a little bit just to figure it all out, but it doesn't mean that we necessarily have to close the whole school for a long time. Good to know. Dr. Nuzzo, thank you so much for being with us and sharing your information. Thanks for having me.